Hi, my name's Andy, and what I'm setting out to do with this video is show you how I've constructed a two-element monoband uh, antenna for use on the 20-meter band. Uh, I'm not saying it's the best construction, uh, but it's one that I've made, and it uh, it works. I'll give you the construction details and uh, the costings of it uh, later on in this video. Uh, the idea was to have something very lightweight that I could uh, put up and take down on my own in windy conditions. Hope you find it interesting. Although it's probably not very clear in this image, uh, the pictures showing you the SWR and impedance traces for the uh, antenna. The minimum SWR is 1.1 to 1 at 14.235 megahertz. It has a uh, 1.5 to 1 bandwidth of uh, 0 0.26 megahertz wide and that's from 14.092 megahertz to 14.35 megahertz. The antenna isn't intended to be a permanent feature in the back garden as I don't think that the one inch diameter tubes that I've used for the center section of the elements uh, would be man enough to uh, survive the constant hammering of the wind. I'll give you the dimensions at the end of this video uh, the antenna that I'm showing you is a finished device and it's working well. Uh, I'm just tweaking the gamma match and uh, for that I, I'd like to say a special thanks to Steve G3TXQ for uh, his help and uh, advice. To make the construction easy I chose not to split the driven element so that suggests a gamma match should be used to feed the driven element. My target operating frequency was 14.2 megahertz. Looking at the internet I found a supplier of 5 meter long aluminium tubes in a range of sizes. For the elements I used a combination of 1 inch, 3 quarter inch and half inch diameter tubes. The boom is one and a half inches diameter and the mast is made from one and a half and one and three quarter inch diameter tubes. Uh, all of the tubes are 16 SWG, that's the English uh, uh, measurement SWG, and that's 1.625 millimeters thick. All of the dimensions are outside uh, diameters. The ends of the one inch and three quarter inch tubes are slotted so that they can be compressed to hold the smaller diameter tubes inside them and uh, for that I've used hose clips. Because of the way that the tubes nest together uh, a single narrow slot or four narrow slots didn't remove enough material to allow the ends of the tube to be squeezed enough but I found that by using three hacksaw blades side by side in the same frame did the job perfectly, cut out a nice wide slot. For the centre section of both elements I used a full 5 meter long 1 inch diameter tube and cut slots in both ends of uh, those one inch tubes. There's no other cutting or drilling uh, to those one inch tubes. Next I cut two five meter lengths of three quarter inch tube in half and I cut the four slots in one end of each of the four tubes. And finally I cut the tip sections of the elements. I cut four lengths off at three foot each of the half inch tube. 
on the half inch tube I marked one inch intervals from the end uh, with a hacksaw blade as I thought that would come in very useful when it comes to finally tuning the end sections. I chose to work with a director rather than a reflector so the beam is constructed with a driven element and then a shorter director uh, so the, uh, the beam is focused from the driven element uh, out towards the director element. Um, finally I cut the boom which is uh, 9 foot of one and a half inch tube. The uh, tube assembly is held together with U-bolts and a four millimeter thick plate cut from a uh, 250 millimeter by 250 millimeter uh, sheet of aluminium that I purchased from the same people that I got the tube from. The final item is the gamma matching section. I could have simply put a capacitor in a box and tried to seal it but whenever I've looked into these sealed boxes they always seem to be a bit damp inside so I decided to uh, work on a coaxial gamma capacitor made from materials that I had to hand. I'd recently installed some outside taps and I had some 15mm ID uh, MDPE tube that I'd uh, used on that job. It turns out that the outside diameter of the uh, MDPE tube is a very hard force fit into the inside of 22 millimeter diameter domestic water pipe that we use in the UK. Uh, I had to scrape the surface off the plastic pipe to force fit it into the tube but I smeared, smeared it with silicon uh, sealant and uh, forced it in so it, it forms a perfect watertight seal. The inner section of the capacitor is formed from 15 millimeter diameter copper pipe again this has an almost interference fit into the blue MDPE tube and with a bit of grease on it, it will remain waterproof for years. And there is simply no air gap or space for water to get in and alter the capacitor value. From bench tests, I've established that this arrangement gives me approximately 11 picofarads per inch of engagement. Currently, to give me the uh, 1.1 to one SWR. Uh, the gamma is set up with a length of 35 inches and 13 sixteenths of an inch and that's that's very precise but it is uh, very sensitive to adjustment and the spacing of the uh, gamma rod from the element is six inches the 15 millimeter pipe is engaged six and three quarter inches into the um, body of the 22 millimeter diameter copper tube. I set out to make an antenna that I could raise and lower easily on my own. The trick is to work out the position of the three guide ropes as this is the key to dropping the aerial in the right place. The main thing is the positioning of the fixed guy to my right as I raise the mast. As you can see here it's easy and very predictable. I should point out that when I pull up the mast I'm standing on the deck and my hands are seven foot above ground level so that gives me quite a mechanical angular advantage. Please let me know if you find this of uh, interest or if it's helpful to you. And yes, I do know that there are issues with mixing copper and aluminium, but I've found over the years that if the joints are greased, uh, they'll uh, be fine for, for many years. Uh, thanks for watching.